up everybody i am key loves god welcome back to my channel where i help uplift encourage and inspire others on how to be the best versions of themselves and on how to be made in his image in today's video i'm going to be re reacting to aoc network's video something biblical may come in 2023 god's people must prepare so the title alone made me want to react to this video i'm not really for sure what it's going to be about you guys, um, definitely head over to this channel and show it some love if you do enjoy this video or you feel like it was helpful to you in any way. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started so you can even see if it is something that um, you like. Make sure if you're commenting down below in the comment section that you are being respectful of other people's you know, thoughts and opinions. So um, I just wanted to say that first because some people can be a little bit much in the comment section. So let's get started and see what it's about. If you have seen our Hosea prophecy video or the numerous Bible prophecy videos covering why around 2030 might be a significant time in history, mm. then you will also know that there is a great chance that 2023, seven years prior to that, may also be a huge marker in Bible prophecy. And so as we move into this new year, be advised. Some of you may endure some things in your personal life. And I must say this, it will not be to break you, but to prepare you for God's power to operate in your life. Remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12. He wrote how God revealed to him that his power is made perfect in weakness. Amen. And then Paul said, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest upon me. You see, Paul was beaten, mocked, thrown in prison, many hardships. But he was a man also of power. The Holy Spirit was able to use him without hindrance. He healed, even raised the dead. Why? Because when you endure and overcome hardships, while keeping the faith and being on God's side, it positions you to experience his power. This is why Paul said, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight, delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. How is he strong? As he said in the earlier verse, because Christ's power is made perfect in, in weakness. weakness. And because of his weaknesses, because of his hardships, he endured faithfully and received the power of God. So friends, what some of you are currently enduring and will endure, it will not be to break you, but to position you for Holy Spirit power. And the key, listen, the key is when that test comes, you have to pass. You have to pass. Are you going to repeat it again? So how do you do that? By proving faithful. Remember, when Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers and made a slave, Just well, he up. was then in servitude for years. And he likely had no idea what would happen to him. He probably felt abandoned by God. But he wasn't abandoned by God. In fact, God used him to powerfully save not only his family, but the entire nation. But the spark for that was, number one, him experiencing hardship mm -hmm. and number two remaining righteous through those hardships and that's what he did he did not curse God no he served God even in prison and he continued to resist sin which is evidenced by how he refused to sleep with Potiphar's wife when she came on to him right and so he passed the test and entered his purpose same with Job. You guys this know how lost. many things um, Joseph went through in the Bible. Like, his brothers literally didn't like him. 
because Joseph opened up to them and he told them that he had a dream that all of them were bowing down to him. And they also saw how his father treated, their father treated Joseph different from them because he had Joseph in his old age. So he went and, you know, he gave Joseph this wonderful, colorful jacket and the brothers were hating. They were really mad. They were like, how did, why is he getting treated so different and so special from the rest of us? Like, we didn't get a colorful jacket and now he's having dreams and stuff that we were bowing down to him. We got to get rid of him. So they came up with an idea and like, you know, they were really just trying their hardest just to get rid of him. And eventually all they did was had him sold off into slavery. And they went back and they took the little torn up jacket or whatever to the father as proof that, you know, Joseph had passed away. Which is just really, really sad. Um, and the whole, their whole life, you know, the father just felt like he was upset because, he, you know, he just felt like somewhere, somehow, some way that in his spirit that he felt like his son was still alive. And he was this whole time. And they all end up bowing down to him because he did. He saved all of his people. So he faced a lot of different hardships. And during all of that stuff that he went through, even after the fact that he got sold off into slavery, like he was thrown into a prison. And it wasn't until when he was able to tell or decipher a dream. He was able to explain what the dreams meant. He kept moving up and up and up and up and ranking until boom. Now look at him. Um, so that just goes to show you and to show all of us that just because we're facing hard times in life that we don't understand, we must still choose to be faithful. Like a lot of us will feel just like Joseph and we just are like, you know what? We're not going to be faithful anymore because we're not seeing any evidence of God working in my life. We're not seeing any proof that God is actually listening, that God is here, that our circumstances are changing. And we let our four senses or our five senses, excuse me, dictate our circumstances. But faith is the evidence of things hoped for. It's the reality of things that is not yet seen. So it's like we can't allow our five senses to trick us into thinking that things are always going to be the same, that we're always going to have these issues, that we're always going to be stuck because that's just not the truth. So you have to remain faithful during trials and tribulation and during adversity because when you do, just like Joseph, you'll rise up to the top lost everything, his family, his wealth, and even his health. And so he had the hardship, and then he added to that righteousness. How so? Because even during that hardship, he continued to serve God. He never once cursed God, and he continued to worship God. He didn't blame God. And when he lost things, when he lost money, he would say things like, well, the Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. When he lost loved ones, he would say things like, Though he slay me, yet I will hope in him. Those around him thought he was insane for how he continued to serve this God, even though his life was falling apart. But it was that faith, that perseverance, that righteousness, even in the middle of hardship, that allowed him to pass his test. He made up his mind. He was going to keep the faith. Yeah. And so he passed the test. And of course, God restored him with more than he even had before. And in the resurrection, he will receive even more than that. And so, See, some of us don't pass our tests, so we have to keep going through the same tests over and over and over again. Just like the Israelites, when they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, we are doing the same thing when we do not learn from these cycles that we go through. So we will go through them again and again and again until you learn what it is that God wants you to learn. So to those of you who are experiencing a test right now or are about to experience a test, I want you to hear something. 
not long ago, the Spirit of the Lord led me to randomly share a video, uh, which is not something I am known to do. Um, but in this moment, I was led to share one just with my phone while I was in my truck. I was then allowed to upload it to the AOC Network Instagram page. And this was a message that now I believe makes sense. It needed to be heard for this season, for this time that we are entering. So take to heart what you will hear in light of what we've just discussed here. God allows you to go through things, not to break you, but to test you. Because once you get on the other side of the test is the blessing. When you go through hard times, no matter what it is, don't look at it as, oh God, why is this happening to me? No, look at it as an opportunity to pass the test. If you live long enough, you're going to have some type of a test, whether it's a financial thing, health thing, or relationship thing, something like that. And you have to look at that thing as a as an opportunity, like this is it, this is my shot. God is about to allow me to experience the Joseph thing, the, the, the Job thing. He's allowing me to experience something that's going to really be great for his kingdom and great for my testimony. But for me to experience that, I have to first go through this test. So every test you encounter, don't look at it as a negative. Look at it as a positive because it's an opportunity to demonstrate your faithfulness to God. And what he is saying is so hard to do. It is so much easier said than done to look at your trials and tribulations like an opportunity. Because I don't get excited whenever something, some storm comes and I feel like I'm in that long season of just darkness where you have no answers to your questions. You feel like God is not talking to you and you, you don't see your prayers coming through and you're just in the dark. You don't know what to do. You're like, okay, hello, God, are you there? Are you listening? You know, um, you're, we're told to go within ourselves because inside of us is the kingdom of God. There is no external God from ourselves. You know, Jesus Christ, he lives inside of us. So the Holy Spirit is inside of us, right? So you have to, when you pray, you have to make sure that you go within yourself and the answers that you seek are already there because the kingdom of God lives inside of you. First John 4, 4 tells us that. For greater is he who is in me, in me, not around me, than he that is in the world. So therefore, when we go through trials and tribulations, the first thing we want to do is go to external sources. Go to call our friends. Go to call our family members. We go to this God that we've been indoctrinated in a program to think that exists outside of us that is in the sky that is upstairs so to speak but really it's inside of you and when you examine what you've already been through you can look at your current situation and say if I could get through that surely I could get through this I've been through much worse than this situation right here, than this trial, than this tribulation. Surely I can get through this. So I like to think of it as looking at your past as ammunition for your future. You're like, hey, look, if I could get, if I could get through that situation that I went through that was like the worst situation, then this right here is a piece of cake. Or you know what? This situation reminds me a lot of when I went through that last situation. So now I'm going to take what I learned from that situation and apply it to this current situation. It's literally like the same thing. It's just a different choice of words instead of like an opportunity. You can look at it as like, I can overcome that situation. I can overcome this situation because I've already been through something similar to this before. So that's how you could try to look at it. And when you're going into trials and tribulations and just know that when you remain faithful, that when you come out on the other side of it, you'll be that much more greater. You'll be like, then I'll have some more ammo under my belt. Then I have more like, you know, for what God is trying to do for my purpose, for my life, for my destiny. How can you demonstrate your faithfulness to God if you've never had to go through an extreme test that would have taken you out if it wasn't for the grace of God? I feel like I've been through a thousand tests. You need to have a story. Last year. Where you can say, if it wasn't for God, 
I would have never survived that. If it wasn't for my faith in God, I would have never gotten through that. So if you haven't had an experience like that yet, just keep on living. It's going to come. And remember this message. When it arrives, don't wallow in depression. You say, wow, this is my chance. <laughs> this is my opportunity. I'm about to, I'm about to show God that even, that even I lost everything, he is my king. I'm going to show God that even if I was having a health crisis and it seemed that there was no way out and it seemed my prayers weren't being answered, Jesus is still my king. Okay. I'm about to show God that when it seems like everything in my life is falling apart, Jesus is still king. I'm still going to praise his name. I'm still going to glory him. Why? Because you have a test to pass. And on the other side of the test is the blessing. What does it look like to prove faithful? When you were going through things. I was looking at the story of uh, Paul and Silas. When they were thrown in prison. They were preaching the gospel. Thrown in prison. And they praised God. While they were in prison. And then the gates were open. open. Yeah. It wasn't Nobody their was complaining there. that allowed God to free them. It wasn't them saying to God. You know Lord. you know, We've been praising you. We've been preaching your name. How can you allow us to end up in jail? It wasn't that. It was the fact that. That even when they were going through that, they continued to praise God and worship him and say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are mighty. You are amazing. And when heaven saw that they were praising God, even during their trial, their test, their storm, the gates were open and they were released. Yeah. What's the message here? Same with Joseph. What is the message here? See, when you praise when God you in the midst of adversity or in the midst of trials and tribulations, you shift the paradigm. Because you have an attitude of praise, you have an attitude of thanksgiving, of of just being grateful, thankful to be alive, to be blessed, you know? And so your situation goes from one of self-pity to one outside of yourself. So that praise shifts that paradigm in your mind, your whole, your whole mindset shifts from focusing on yourself to focusing on God for being thankful. A thankful attitude takes you places that a negative one could never. You know what I mean? And I used to always read this quote in my gym class. I was in elementary school. I remember seeing it every single day. Every time we would like go to gym. Like we didn't go to gym every day, but every time we would go to gym, I would always see this same banner. And it says, your... I'm trying to think if I can remember it. Your attitude determines your elevation or something along those lines. It rhymed though. So that's not exactly it, but that's the gist of it. So your attitude determines how high you climb in life. If you have a good attitude, you have a thankful attitude, you have a grateful attitude, you wake up and you, you have an attitude of gratitude, you know? That goes a long way because you, you, you feel lighter. You feel better. You let go of all of that heaviness that weighs you down. And you're able to just rise above your situation. You're able to rise above your circumstances. So that's why it's so important for us in the midst of troubles, in the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulations, in the midst of our storms, to do things that make you happy. Do things that make you smile. Go for a walk, you know. Go get connected back to the motherland, which is the earth, to get you realigned with yourself, which can get you connected to God. You get what I'm saying? That's what you need to do, you guys. So I just want you guys to make sure that you are praising no matter what your situation and your circumstances look like. Praise God. No matter what. When you are going through a storm, a trial, a test, heaven wants to see if you can pass it and be faithful. And a, a big indicator that you are being faithful is your praise. Yeah. That's a form of showing that no matter what, you're still going to be faithful. And so as we move into this next year, I want you to remember this. If you ever go through a storm, ever go through a trial, don't let it take away your praise. Mm -hmm. Don't let it take away your obedience, your faithfulness. That's the thing that proves to God and everyone around you Amen. and to yourself that you're passing the test. 
this is what we're going to do is pass the test as they arrive because it only adds to your tests the the moment. Moment. Yep. and God's going to use it for his glory and for your benefit too Amen all right so if you're going through any test any trial any tribulation or maybe you're not you know the whole point is to get prepared and be ready and stay ready so you don't have to get ready can i get an amen make sure that you guys um like this video and um subscribe so that way you could be notified when i do post another video and make sure to go over to AOC Network, show this channel some love. They're almost at 1 million subscribers, which is incredible. And just know that like, when we go through these types of things in life, it just shows that we're still alive. It shows that we're human. It shows that we have purpose. There is purpose to your pain. You're not just going through this for no reason, okay? So I love you guys so much. I will see you guys in another video. And I hope you guys have a blessed and amazing rest of your day. Mwah.